Hello, and thank you for joining us on the Stay Healthy Knoxville podcast, brought to you by Simply Physio, aimed at helping you live an enjoyable, fit, and healthy life in and around our community of Knoxville, Tennessee. And now, here is your host, Dr. John Mark Chesney. Stay Healthy in Knoxville. I'm excited to uh, have Andrew Henderson on the show today, and he is owner and manager of Fitness Together. Uh, they have four area locations, Farragut, North Shore, Bearden, and Hardin Valley. And Andrew is a personal trainer. Uh, he um, has his undergraduate degree in psychology and a master's in sports psychology uh, from UT. And he's been in the personal training uh, arena for a little over 20 plus years. And um, so he's been uh, managing fitness together uh, on his um, dinner during his downtime. He enjoys uh, mountain biking, playing guitar, skiing, boating, reading, cooking, and hanging out with uh, his family. So we're going to be going over some uh, some cool topics. We're going to have a segment. Uh, the second half of the segment is going to be uh, fitness over 40. So some of the questions we're going to answer here on the show that you can stay tuned for is, what is the most uh, common misconception about exercise uh, that somebody struggles with, um, particularly uh, with somebody over 40? Uh, how do I lose weight without gaining, um, without going on another fad diet? What is the best kind of cardio exercise to do for someone with bad knees? Uh, can I do, what can I do if I don't have enough time to exercise or cook healthy meals? And so, um, and, a, and a number of other things we're going to go over the show. So stay tuned and uh, and listen to the very end because Andrew's going to have a special offer uh, for our listeners. So, Andrew, uh, welcome to Stay Healthy Knoxville. Oh, thanks for having me, John Mark. It's it's a pleasure to uh, get to be a guest on your show. Definitely, definitely. Well, um, Andrew, we like to uh, start uh, the segment just hearing a little bit more about you, and you know, we understand that you are an expert in personal training, and um. And just really to hear the story behind the story, how you really got this interest into the field. I mean, I, I've developed an interest in the human body, I guess, ever since uh, an injury back in 10th grade, okay. um, playing soccer. Uh, I had a por- partially torn um, uh, ligament in, in my knee. And uh, back then, instead of going to gym class, they'd send me to the little rehabilitation gym in our high school. And I just did hundreds of leg extensions and and. <laughs> Um, basically got myself strong enough to, uh, be able to play soccer again. So, uh, my first interest in the body was actually physical therapy. Mm. Um, and that was my original major when I went to college was as a physical therapy major, um, took some psychology classes and really fell in love with, with the idea of, you know, how, how the mind and and the brain really drives the rest of us. Um, and so it's kind of switched gears to psychology, um, but, you know, 25 years later, I've kind of looped back around to towards how do we combine the body and the mind uh, so they work together on the same page. Um, and personal training has been a really good way for me to combine both of those interests. Hmm. Awesome. And then, um, so you got to uh, Knoxville by way of UT, is that right? That's right. The big the big Orange Express. Okay. Uh, I started grad school at, at UT in, I believe, 1995 as a uh, a sports psychology uh, major here and uh, wrapped that up a few years later, um, started working in some local gyms and health clubs along the way just to, you know, pay the bills. Mm-hmm. Um, but realized I was actually pretty good at personal training and, and clients were getting results and uh, I was getting a full schedule and could actually, you know, have a few extra bucks laying around. So, um, you know, that's kind of, it just kind of fell in. I just fell into it, I guess. Right. So it, it wasn't, um, doesn't sound like it was necessarily something that uh, you kind of had a, the mindset for, but it almost fell in your lap and you're like, hey, this is kind of like, I like how this goes. Yeah. I was never what you'd call a gym rat. You know, I really didn't start exercising until maybe my senior year in college. Um, and, and um, but I, I liked the results I was getting. I liked how I felt. I became, you know, I kind of always struggled with um, self confidence as a kid. Um, and, and working out and building some muscle and, and changing the way I looked made me feel better about myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so I guess I kind of fell into it that way, but I was never the guy at the gym for three hours or, you know, um, you know, walking around with my gallon of water or my protein <laughs> in a cup. Um, so I kind of took it more from how it made me feel psychologically mm-hmm. um, and, and then realized there's a lot of people in the same situation I was in. Uh, right. Maybe they didn't feel their best or – they didn't have the confidence that they wanted, um, and they wanted more out of life than what they were getting. 
Um, so that was the angle I've always taken on, on fitness um, to make it something that was manageable, sustainable, and that everybody could uh, enjoy and benefit from. Nice. I, sound, I find that a real interesting, you know, blend with your, um, your, with your degree and training in psychology and sports psychology, and even just understanding probably on a deeper level, like how the mind can be a greater uh, roadblock for a lot of people than maybe the body itself. Absolutely. I mean, you know, nothing happens without the thought being initiated in the brain first, mm-hmm. at least for, for, you know, the, the things that like exercise and eating and, and basically all the decisions that we have to make stem from, you know, a series of chemical reactions in our brain. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so we have to get our minds right first in order for our bodies to follow the lead. Um, and I'm sure in physical therapy, you see that as well. You have certain patients that are motivated to to get better quickly and are, are coherent and, and, and comply with what you ask them to do. And other ones who maybe uh, self-sabotage and, and aren't quite, uh, quite as compliant as they need to be to get optimal results. Right. So we feel like if we can get the mind right first by sitting down and really evaluating their goals and, and why the goals are important to them, uh, we're going to have a better chance of them uh, following through with their homework and, and showing up for their workouts and putting in a hundred percent effort. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I completely agree. If you don't, um, if you don't work towards the thing that's important for them, then there's very little, uh, purpose or drive. Yep. And, um, uh, if we don't know what that thing is, then, then we're really, um, up a Creek without a paddle. Yeah, so that's the first thing we want to know is why why are you here and, mm-hmm. and um, why is it important enough for you to commit to this program? Um, and, and when we remind them of what their why is, that tends to uh, help them stay more motivated and, and, and adhere to the program even on days that they don't want to. Nice. So, um, so yeah, so you, uh, out of college, started uh, personal training, and uh, I understand that you worked at Fort Sanders. Was that where you went shortly after school to Fort Sanders? Yeah, so I started just um, putting up flyers around campus at UT, and, and I would start training a few people in my apartment complex that had a gym. Just from some flyers, I started hanging around. I nice. took a little <laughs> weekend uh, certification course so I could call myself a trainer, mm-hmm. um, then started getting a few clients at the old aquatic center. Um, and actually the old court South on Walker Springs hired me first. Uh, I worked there for about a month or so. Okay. Uh, it wasn't really working out for me. Um, and then Fort Sanders had called and offered me a position and, um, it was a really good fit. I spent 10 years there, built up a great clientele and I had some really good mentors that taught me the right way to do it. So I'm really appreciative of that opportunity that they gave me, um, and so, yeah, 10 years of really learning how to do it the right way, I think, set me up for uh, a better chance of success to strike out on my own afterwards. So, yeah, so after 10 years, like you are saying, um, at Fort Sanders, uh, so you made a, a switch, a pretty big kind of step, right, as far as getting started um, at, with uh, fitness together. Uh, now, at that time, was was there fitness together, like in, in Knoxville or – um, I'd love to hear just um, kind of how all that went. Like, what was the motivating factor for you to really take that step out and, and do something a little bit different? I mean, I've always had an entrepreneur, entrepreneurial bug, um, mm-hmm. even since I was a little kid. I've always wanted to, I was always a hustler, you know, trying to sure. make a buck, raking leaves, mowing, mowing yards. Um, so I started a little side business while I was at Fort Sanders and we would go into country clubs like Fox Den and, and operate out of their facility, go into corporate facilities, go into homes. Uh, we'd even go into nursing homes and help people with their workouts. So I was kind of doing the side gig for a while, but realized I was just spending too much time driving around all over the place and didn't really have a place to call my own and do things the way I wanted to. Right. Um, I was walking down uh, in Chattanooga through downtown Chattanooga one day on a Saturday afternoon and walked by a fitness together there. I just peered in through the window and it looked amazing. You know, there's this big bright wall, red wall with equipment in it and a big bowl of fresh fruit, um, clean white towels, bottled water. It, it felt like a really nice place. They were closed because um, they closed at 12 on Saturdays. Um, I drove back down there on Monday morning to meet with the owner. Really? I was so excited because it just felt like what I was looking for, a model that I could um, open up, um, something that would be manageable for me. Um, 
There was another gentleman in town, uh, Craig, it was his name, who had already opened up or was in the process of opening up the Farragut location. Um, so he had actually contacted me to see if I would be interested in being in, his manager for that store. Uh, but I was already well down the path of, of trying to open up my own location, the one on North Shore Drive. Um, so, um, uh, you know, after about a year of uh, a, a lot of prayers, a lot of uh, begging family members for money, uh, uh, talking with other franchisees, I finally pulled the plug, left Fort Sanders, and uh, opened up my own facility uh, out on North Shore Drive. Um, 11 years later, um, I've actually bought out Craig, his two locations, and we opened up a, a location in Hardin Valley. So, uh, you know, we've got about 300 clients, about 15 to 16 trainers, and um, we really have a lot of impact on people, which I love. Yeah, that's great. That's great. You can, I'm sure, help more people having some more locations and um, and doing it the way that you guys do it. And uh, I love to hear, even for our listeners, you know, people have options these days as far as, you know, how, what they do, uh, what they don't do, how they exercise, where they exercise. And, you know, thinking of, um, you know, someone may, you know, go to Planet Fitness or you have Orange Theory or you have uh, CrossFit. And so just wondering, like, who do you guys really appeal to uh, fitness together? Yeah, and, and there's so many more options now in fitness than there were when we first started. And that's a good thing because, um, not everybody wants to go to a, a 20,000 square foot gym. So the fitness has, you know, in, in smaller facilities has gotten more popular with the CrossFits, the Orange Theories, the bar classes. Um, who we really appeal to the most are, are people who have um, maybe they're not um, as motivated to go to the gym um, on their own. So they need the accountability of the appointment. Um, maybe they've suffered an injury or have a, a medical condition, which makes exercising a little more challenging uh, and they're not quite sure what to do next. Uh, that's a good fit for us or people who don't have a lot of time to figure out what to do when they go to the gym. And in 45 minutes, we can cover all their bases from flexibility to cardiovascular to strength training and even chat about nutrition in between sets. Mm. So it's also really good for people who are crunched for time, but know they need to do something. Mm. Well, and uh, you mentioned you guys have uh, 15 personal trainers. 15 to 16, yeah, something like that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, what do you guys, um, as far as look for, look at something like in a personal trainer, is there certain like requirements um, that um, that you really look for when, when hiring or staffing um, the, the studios there? Yeah, um, so the first thing is their personality. Um, cause to be an effective trainer, you have to care about people first and for foremost. So, um, I like to see what motivates them and, and see what their attitude is towards helping others. Mm -hmm. That's gotta have, gotta have that. Um, they've gotta be fun people to be around cause you're going to spend two to three hours a week with this guy or this, this gal, and they've got to be able to tell a joke every now and then and, and, and be somewhat interesting or else it gets kind of old pretty quick. Um, they have to have, um, high energy and be enthusiastic and passionate. They have to love what they do uh, because sometimes it's a 6 a.m. session or sometimes it's 9 p.m. And if you're not excited about, you know, seeing small progress in your clients, then it's probably not the job for you. Sure. Uh, from, from a credentialed standpoint, uh, definitely are looking for trainers with at least a bachelor's level. Uh, many of our trainers have achieved master's degrees. Um, national certifications are a must if they don't have it they're expected to get it within three months of joining us um and just really you know since we are a team which is different than most training businesses um we may uh, a trainer a client may work with two or three different trainers in one week and so they have to be able to um cooperate and and be supportive of the team rather than self-serving and egotistical right sure so it's, it's a lot of things you have to be able to do to be an effective employee for us right well that's yeah. um it's good to have, I'm sure, a very clear understanding of that. So you, you know, find the right people uh, to serve, you know, the clients here in Knoxville that, that need, you know, some assistance with, you know, getting healthier, with moving regularly and getting stronger, staying, you know, strong and agile and, um, and, and mobile, right? Um, yep. You mentioned um, earlier some about like nutrition, as well and understand you're going through like some uh some level of like a certification in nutrition would love to hear like about that and also how 
uh, you guys uh, use uh, the nutritional content with your clients. Yeah, um, and so we have to be careful to walk a, a kind of a fine line in Tennessee. We're not registered dietitians or licensed nutritionists. So you know, what we can do is speak about nutrition in general terms um, and, and help our clients identify the two or three major struggles that they're dealing with. For a lot of people, it might be skipping breakfast or um, – late night snacking or emotional eating. Mm -hmm. um, and so the first thing we try to do is just identify where their struggles are. Um, the second thing we want them to do is to become more aware of, of the things that they're doing. Um, maybe it's, um, you know, keeping a, a journal for a few days so they can actually be mindful of what they're doing. Uh, maybe it's telling them to um, put a timer on and, and they have to take at least 15 to 20 minutes to eat their meal. A lot of people are in such a rush nowadays that they speed eat and they don't know how hungry they are because it takes about 20 minutes for the brain to signal to the stomach or vice versa, the stomach to signal to the brain that it's full. Mm -hmm. um, but yet they keep eating because they haven't chewed their food enough. So it, it really depends on each client, but we try to just stay within those behavioral boundaries. Um, we will talk a little bit about the importance of things like fiber, lower sugar, uh, healthy fats. Um, the program that I'm going through is called Precision Nutrition. Um, it's probably the world's leading nutrition coaching program. Um, and I selected it because it's really based on good research. Um, but it's also done in a way that's easy for clients to manage. Um, there's not a lot of calorie counting. There's not um, endless food journaling, which people just won't do after a while. Right. <laughs> it's really based on just um, some easy to follow principles and understanding clients' motivation and behaviors. Because, again, that's probably the most important part is um, them having the um, ability to change their behaviors. Sure. Yeah, yeah I'm, I find, um, you know, I'm, as a physical therapist, it's the same with me. I can um, recognize, like, when there's nutritional deficits. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't use nutrition to treat an illness. You know, that's mm -hmm. when somebody really needs to seek a dietitian or nutritionist. Yeah. Uh, but for somebody who's, you know, generally healthy and looking to improve their health and maximize their strength or recover from an injury and, you know, my um, arena of physical therapy, that nutrition is really key. And that's, mm -hmm. um, I, I, you know, I think a thing that people don't regularly connect with, like of how they feel and even how they're maybe gaining strength or reducing inflammation um, how diet can be a huge, um, make a huge impact on, um, on them reaching their goals. Yeah. If you ever want to have an interesting case study, um, read about Tom Brady and what he eats or what he won't eat. Sure. He's so <laughs> meticulous about what he eats. And I believe he works with a, a kind of a, a cutting edge physical therapist as well, who maybe helps him with some of those decisions. Um, not everyone is going to be able to eat like that. But you know what can, he does? Have you like? It sounds like you've. Like read I don't some. think he's ever eaten a strawberry before. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because of, because of the sugar in it or something okay. like that. Yeah. So uh, anyway, you'll have to check it out. Um, most of our clients aren't at that level, nor, nor should <laughs> they sure. be. But if we can get them to, you know, usually it's like, okay, it's, it'll be good to eat some fruits. Like eat some strawberries if you're not eating any fruit, right? Yeah. yeah don't yeah. worry too much about. Yeah. Yeah. If exactly. you're not there yet, um, if you're not an NFL player. <laughs> yeah. Most clients just need to eat more produce, more fruits and vegetables, yeah. and maybe a little bit less uh, refined carbohydrate and sure. uh, cut down on their fat a little bit, uh, especially red meat, which is very popular around here. Well, nice. Well, um, yeah, one of, with you having been in the field, um, you know, for two plus decades, um, yeah, we're just even interested in like, have you seen certain shifts um, from like when you graduated to where you are now and how like uh, personal, like understanding of the body or personal training that you guys have um, adapted and um, with, you know, the current level of, you know, thinking, understanding, research? I think, um, you know, the ability and the tools we have to assess clients is, is improved. Things like functional movement screening, where we can assess a client's posture, their hip mobility, um, their calf and ankle flexibility. So that allows us to design more thoughtful, more specific programs for clients if we have a better way to assess them first. Sure. Um, and that was not really something that was being done 20 years ago. Uh, we might check your body fat and your, and your grip strength, um, maybe your flexibility, and, and that was it. Um, so the assessments have gotten better, um, and so we can design programs better. So one of the things that we've changed uh, in the last 20 years is how well we can um, 
assess new clients and develop, develop uh, appropriate programs for them. I think the emphasis have ch has changed more now to uh, functional strength, mobility, flexibility, and improving overall quality of life. Whereas 20 years ago, a lot of personal training was still driven by bodybuilding magazines, quite honestly, you know, sure. three sets of 10 leg extensions, you know, five sets of 20 bicep curls. It was very muscle by muscle based, whereas now it's more movement oriented, uh, which is more in line with our clientele, the 50 year old who just wants to be able to play with their kids uh, without, <laughs> without pulling a muscle. Um, and, and last but not least, I think um, balancing out um, um, a fitness program is more important. So it's, um, it's not just legs one day, shoulders one day, arms one day. It's, um, you know, pushing movements one day. It's pulling movements one sure. day. It's cross training one day. Um, That's what you mean by functional, right? Yeah. It's, it's focusing on more big movement patterns rather than smaller isolated motions. Um, a, we can get more metabolic effect from it. Um, B, muscles are, are, are primarily meant to be worked um, synergistically. They work together, not in isolation. And so, um, you know, the, the role of isolation exercises has diminished in the last 20 years. Um, and the last but not least, I think there's more attention to the, the, the emotional, the spiritual, and the psychological aspect of what it means to be healthy um, sure. and, and helping clients balance all that out, including the stress of kids, of parents, of jobs, and being able to figure out how fitness plays in that instead of, um, you know, taking away from it. Right. Yeah. And I think, um, yeah, that's key too. just when somebody takes care of themselves and gets some release of, you know, uh, release of cortisol and replace it with some endorphins with, you know, exercise that not only is it good for them, but it's also good for those other relationships you mentioned, you know, the, uh, the spouse, the kids, um, and um, and that's that can be huge, yeah, you know, huge for those relationships. Mm -hmm. Well, nice. Um, well, we are going to take a quick break to hear a word from our sponsor, and when we come back, we're going to um, be specifically talking about fitness over forty. Stay Healthy Knoxville is sponsored by Simply Physio, a physio clinic that equips and empowers you to live your life to the fullest so that you can enjoy the things you love to do and be the person you are made to be. Simply Physio specializes in helping people get back to a healthy and active lifestyle, living free from pain and medication and avoiding unnecessary surgery. Stay tuned until the end of the episode to receive a special gift from Simply Physio and enjoy listening to the rest of the episode. Welcome back uh, to the second uh, half of our episode here with Andrew Henderson. So we're going to um, just take a slight shift and um, talk about fitness over 40. So Andrew, what I'm um, just interested in, if there's a common misconception about exercise that you find people struggle with, uh, maybe particularly when the you know, crowd somebody that's over 40 that maybe keeps them on the couch or, um, and prevents them from really um, getting healthy with, with exercise. I think the common misconception is that um, your body is physiologically able to be 20 again when you're in your 40s um, and, and hormone levels change. And that might be the biggest challenge that clients face. And I think sometimes having to reset um, realistic expectations. Sure. Um, you know, a woman who is struggling with menopause does not have the same metabolic rate as she did 20 years earlier. Um, and, and so... Uh, while it is important that they try to be at the healthy weight, um, what I find is that they do anything and sometimes unrealistic and, and dramatic measures to try to be at what they perceive to be the right weight rather than focusing on the overall picture of health. And I think a lot of that can be blamed on social media, Instagram models that are airbrushed to the T, um, magazine covers, um, and just a constant barrage of messages that you have to be the ideal image. Um, you know, we're not supposed to look like we're 15 years old when we're 50 years old. Mm -hmm. Now, there are exceptions to the rule. Um, they're usually very genetically blessed. Um, so I think the misconception is that um, I can be 12% body fat again, uh, and I, I, I can um, do it, you know, without having to change drastically what I'm, what I'm eating and, and how I'm moving. So, um, you know, we just have to help clients set realistic expectations when they come in after a certain age. 
At 47 years old myself, I know it's going to be much harder for me to build muscle now than it was when I was in my eight, 18 to 20 because I don't make as much testosterone as I did. Sure. Um, so but what I have to do is, is focus more on my flexibility, my mobility. Uh, I can still stay strong. My cardiovascular endurance is still good. Uh, but I have to train a little bit differently now than I did uh, 20 years ago because my body doesn't recover as quickly. I've suffered from injuries. My joints have some inflammation and arthritis in them. And so um, I don't want to blow it out to the point where I can't exercise in two or three years. I want to sustain my mobility and activity for the next 30 to 40 years. Mm -hmm. So I'd say maybe that's the biggest challenge we have with folks who are coming in after a long period of inactivity. Right. Yeah. Understanding the importance of moving and moving well. Uh, but moving in a in a way that's setting them up for long term success is is definitely key. It is, and it can be a hard conversation to have with someone who you know hasn't taken care of themselves and whose um, hormones are, are are against them. Uh, they can still lose weight and and, and look better, um, but they have to kind of change their mindset a little bit from the scale to, uh, to their daily behaviors and to how they're feeling and to how their clothes are fitting and to all the other wonderful things that are happening to their body uh, because sometimes the scale doesn't move as quickly as it should or as much as we think it should anyway. And that's just that's just the hard, cold fact of life. Mm -hmm. Right, definitely. And yeah, um, yeah I'm, I'm amazed at what the, the body can accomplish. And I'm sure you see it, you know, every day too. And you know, obviously there are, you know, you know, limits, you know, people get a little slower as you get a little older, but, um, I was reminded, I saw a clip, um, I think it was the senior Olympics, um, but they were showing like a 40 yard dash of like the over, I think it was like the over 80 bracket and, um, showing these, you know, these older, you know, more, you know, a lot of people in that age demographic maybe are, you know, have a cane or a walker and these people are out there sprinting and, you know, obviously it's, they're not, you know, any, any um, class of Usain Bolt or anything, but <laughs> right. it's, um, it's impressive. Like I would probably have to like work kind of hard to keep up with, <laughs> with some of them. Yeah. I think for, you know, it's, it's helping people realize the improvement in themselves rather than comparing themselves to other people. Mm -hmm. And that's a hard mindset to change, but we start off with an assessment. We show them exactly what they can do. And every six weeks we show them how much more they're improving. Uh, so maybe Susie doubled her number of push ups or Paul, you know, um, was able to finally do a pull up after 20 years of not being able to do one. So we've got to find other ways to measure success other than just the scale, um, because the scale doesn't tell the whole picture. Yeah. And as, as we're talking about, you know, some more, more specifics would be interested in if somebody comes to mind, like an inspirational story, uh, maybe one of your clients who maybe has some odds stacked against them, but you know, with your guys' help and training that they were, they were able to really overcome those, those obstacles. Yeah. And some of those clients are, are kind of, you know, um, household names. Will West does, uh, he works out with us and he's a, a sports talk host on WNML. When he first started, he could barely walk on a treadmill for, for three or four minutes. And now he's running five and 10 Ks. He's probably dropped about 50 or 60 pounds and has really changed his body. Um, you know, his main challenge was um, just poor health to begin with and not knowing what to do and a crazy schedule. Um, another um, client that comes into mind, his name was Paul, and um, he came to us after, um, I believe it was a triple bypass surgery. He was recommended uh, to come to us after he was released from uh, cardiac rehab. Sure. Uh, and uh, a few years later, on his 75th birthday, he came in and did uh, <laughs> 75 push-ups and held a seven-and-a-half-minute plank <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> on his 75th birthday. Um, Man, that, and that was me beat. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, when we started, he couldn't do any of that. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just slowly, gradually increasing his um, workload over time. Yeah, and that's the key thing, like you said, is um, – for people to understand that like with slow, with, um, with, um, routine, you know, it's, it's not really sexy stuff. Right. But with commitment and, and making one step forward at a time, like the, the places people can go from, you know, like you described to, you know, the 75 year old, you know, doing 75 push ups and holding a plank for how long did you say? Seven, seven and, and a half minutes. Seven and a half minutes. I can't do. <laughs> right. Right. Um, but they began at a place that was so far short of that. Yeah. Um, but it was important to him because, mm -hmm. you know, he wanted to have a certain quality of life and he wanted to enjoy his retirement and he knew it needed to be 
healthier and fitter to do it. Um, and so he put the work in. We just kind of pointed him in the right direction. Sure. And yeah, if you know, a listener out there that's, um, you know, thinking that, man, I can't even do, you know, 10 push ups. It was like, start with five, yep. you know, do five. And then, you know, you keep at it. Like the body will adapt. Mm-hmm. And um, it may adapt a little slower if you're a little older, but um, it can adapt and um, it can get stronger and you can you can achieve some some great things you know over time yeah absolutely um well um yeah a few other questions about uh fitness over 40 we talked about a little bit about uh weight um you know weight loss Mm -hmm. and um how do you um how would how would somebody lose weight without going on another fad diet you know so often we hear of just you know the next kind of craze well you know to the best of my knowledge, weight is still about you know, consuming less calories than you expend. Um, so at the end of the day, it kind of boils back down to math. That gets trickier, though, as we age because our metabolism slow down. So we can't count on that basal metabolic rate as much to, to churn through our calories. Um, so the first thing we do recommend is uh, strength training to help build some lean muscle and, and, and give your basal metabolic rate a little bump. Um, the second thing we have to do is, is probably the biggest part, and that's really identify nutritional challenges and roadblocks and help them optimize uh, what they eat, um, how much they eat, which is probably the biggest part. It's still about calories sure, um, and portion sizes and, and when they eat. I think there's importance to all those. Um, there's still room for cardiovascular training to burn a few extra calories, um, although it's a lot easier to consume a calorie than it is to burn one. Um, I'd say, you know, their adage is about 60 to 70% of your weight loss is, is in the kitchen. There, there's probably something to be said for that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, you have to have more realistic expectations, A, when you're, as you get older and, and, and B, for a female, it's just harder. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're not going to lose five or 10 pounds a week. It's not the biggest loser. If you could consistently take off a half a pound a week. Um, adds up. Yeah. Most people don't put on. 20 or 30 or 50 pounds in a year, they put on maybe five pounds a year, but multiply that by a decade and they're 50 pounds overweight. Sure. So we have to remind them how they got to where they're at and then also remind them that it's going to take a little time to undo that. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the same, you know, thing in my you know, field too is like if somebody's has an injury for a long time, the body's compensated is like, I'd love to be able to fix you in one visit, you know, but realistically if this has been going on for, you know, eight, 12, you know, years, then it's going to take a little time. So, you know, the same thing, like you're saying. You have to, I call it getting your wheels aligned or, or building your foundation. And the analogy is that before you can drive your car across the country, that would be losing 50 pounds or a hundred pounds. You have to make sure your, your, your tires are good and they're aligned properly and your suspension is good. Well, that's, that's your core, right? Your core has to be strong. You have to have balance uh, left to right front to back um good mobility or else you're setting yourself up for a misalignment and an injury Mm -hmm. um so before we tell someone to go do cardio six days a week for an hour we've got to make sure that they're capable of of you know moving properly or else they're going to hurt themselves by overdoing it you've probably seen that overuse by people who weren't ready to work that much sure well um you know, talking about injuries um, or somebody that maybe has some bad knees, um, what's what would you say is the best kind of cardio exercise for somebody who has, you know, some bad knees? I say just jump off of a box and, and just go straight to knee replacement surgery. <laughs> <laughs> just get some new knees. No, um, it, it, bad knees, and, and it also kind of applies for people with, um, you know, severe arthritis in their hips, plantar fasciitis, uh, any lower body issue because most of cardio is, is lower body. Um, first thing we want to do is work on flexibility, right? See if there's some muscular issues that uh, might be at play in, in, in that joint's dysfunction. Um, so um, extra stretching, extra movement preparation to, to, to lubricate the joints and, and warm up properly. Um, second thing I would recommend is just a low impact form of cardiovascular exercise. Sure. Uh, I love the elliptical and I love the rowing machine because it gives you a, a similar amount of um, caloric burn as running does without all the impact. Uh, the rowing machine especially is my favorite because it focuses on the right muscles, uh, your quads, your glutes, uh, your lower back, uh, your mid-back, your yeah. shoulders, your posterior chain. 
uh, and most of our clients need more of that. So all of our studios have rowing machines, and I love the rower, so do the rowing machine. Definitely. Well, uh, Andrew, you talked about the importance of flexibility and, you know, balanced training. And that's probably something that doesn't usually come to mind when somebody thinks personal training. Usually, you know, it's probably like all about like strength, you know, getting stronger. But um, it sounds like I've heard you talk about that here um, just on the show. Like, um, and that's something that you you guys find real uh, important for your clients. Um, How do you guys incorporate those things into your sessions? Well, you know, we don't have a ton of time. So the first thing I like to do is teach clients how to to stretch and and do things like foam rolling on their own. So um, uh, we'll spend a session just identifying the most valuable um, stretches and activation exercises for them to do. And we give them handouts and teach them the right way to do it. So that becomes part of their homework program. Um, At the beginning of each session, I love for our clients to do about five to 10 minutes of a warm up uh, before we get started, so that way their muscles are already warm and ready to go. We'll take them through about a three to five minute dynamic preparation. Um, really, depending on where their tightnesses are, we'll focus on that area. Um, at the end of the strength training session, we may do a few minutes of assisted stretching and encourage our clients to cool down afterwards. Nice, um, but it, it takes daily work to undo uh, tight muscles after fifty or sixty years of right. not doing anything. Right. You know, oftentimes what I find is when you do, um, you know, improve the flexibility, like there's hidden strength that they just weren't able to tap into. And yeah. now somebody's, you know, automatically just, you know, had gained something without even having to do too much strengthening yet. And a lot of the strength training, if you do it properly, is also flexibility training. Sure. You know, for you to squat deep requires flexibility and mobility of your ankles, of your knees, of your hips. And so we gradually... Uh, get those clients to squat down deeper by, you know, A, maybe lifting their heels up, uh, B, taking away that heel lift, C, giving them a low box to squat down into. It takes time. Um, part of it's neuromuscular and teaching the body the right way to move, and then the muscles will follow suit. Well, um, Andrew, with um, with maybe somebody who's, um, you know, exercised off and on and, um, and kind of fallen off uh, the wagon, so to speak, um, would be interested in how you keep your clients um, motivated or for maybe a listener, um, what would you kind of say to encourage, you know, somebody who's um, wanting to get back into exercise um, but just hasn't gotten there yet? Um, Well, the first thing is don't give up. Uh, Most people who quit smoking usually fail about six or seven times before they finally kick the habit. Um, so if you try a few times and it doesn't stick, try again. Sure. Um, I know what happens if you don't try again. <laughs> <laughs> um, second thing is, you know, if you have an accountability partner, um, maybe someone in your family, a friend to go walk with somebody to, to share that time with, you're probably more likely to do it. Definitely. You're going to meet some of your socialization needs as well as fitness. And it's more fun. Um, uh, third, if you have a, a, an nagging injury or something that's prohibiting you from exercising, uh, see someone like John Mark. Go see a physical therapist and learn what you, you should it. or shouldn't you be doing. Andrew. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, fourth of all, if um, thanks for that one, you, you need any time. <laughs> uh, you know, hire a personal trainer. <laughs> uh, there you go. Uh, it doesn't have to be forever. Sometimes it's just a month of of, yeah. of getting the ball rolling. I, I kind of half way kid. I said we're the AAA for your body when you're kind of stuck in the ditch on the side of the road and not going very far. Um, you know, just having a few appointments a week for a month or two can really change. Uh, it helps create momentum again, and sometimes sure. that's what we need is momentum. Yeah, I can speak. Um, my father's been working with fitness together with you guys um, and probably going on two plus years. And um, it's been huge, you know, for him. He's, you know, he's um, he's always been, you know, an active you know guy. But um, but providing that uh, level of assistance, of encouragement, like he's achieving things uh, like he's he bench presses way more than me now. And, wow. you know, the thing he's, he's a super motivated I'm guy. Sure he, I'm sure he reminds you of that <laughs> often too, right? Yeah. That's right. I can still run faster than him. <laughs> um, so I got him a few areas, but, uh, but um, yeah, just how you guys motivated, motivated him. And um, yeah, just thank you for, you know, the work that you've done. Um, I know with so many other, countless others in the area as well that I'm sure um, have um, could really give a testimony of, um, 
of, um, of where their health is now having, you know, somebody there by their side, uh, to hold, like you said, hold, holding them accountable, accountable. You know, some people need that. Yep. Some people don't. And if you don't, that's, you know, that's fine. That's, um, that's great. And if you do, you just, you just gotta know what you need. Right. Yep. And, um, and once you know what you need, then, you know, go get it. Your health is something to value. Yep. Um, and it's, um, you know, I can't say that, um, you know, more s- strongly. It's just, you know, you, once you lose your health, you, I mean, you just lose so much. And mm-hmm. so, um, so just hang on to it, preserve it, you know, make decisions, um, you know, whether it be, you, you know, you need to have some assistance cause you're, you're not sure what to do to, you know, hire a personal trainer and, you know, check out fitness together. Um, because your health is something worth fighting for. Well, it is, you know, my mom was struggling right now. She hasn't been home in two months. She's been either in a hospital or assisted living or, um, nursing home. She's almost 90 and oh, wow. she wants nothing more than to have her health. So, if you are healthy, take full advantage of it. Get outside and and, and see all the, the the glory that God has made for us. Uh, don't waste it. If you're struggling to find your health, do something about it. Ultimately, it is a gift from God, and it's your job to take care of it. Um, you can't claim ignorance. Uh, we know what we're supposed to do at this point. There's plenty of people that are willing to help you. Um, all you have to do is is take the initiative and, and get the ball rolling, and you can improve uh, your health. You can be happier. You can be uh, more prosperous in, in so many different ways. Um, but you have to invest some time and energy into it just like anything else. Sure. Well, um, Andrew, I know, um, you had for our listeners here, uh, getting here towards the end of the show, uh, had just a special offer maybe for somebody who is interested in getting a little bit of, uh, some help, um, from you guys. So if you want to let our listeners know, just, uh, yeah, the offer that you, uh, that you can extend to them. Yeah, so what we'd like to do is invite you to come in and learn firsthand um, what Fitness Together is all about. We'd love to meet you and, and, and talk about some of your challenges and, and struggles and goals and aspirations and where you'd like to be with your own health and fitness. Um, maybe take you through a light workout so you can see what working out with a trainer is all about. Um, at the end, we'll be happy to present some options to you, whether it's one-on-one or small group training that uh, would allow you to continue. Or, or maybe we just give you some suggestions on things that you can do on your own. Uh, either way, we'd love to invite you to come and spend some time with us. Uh, absolutely no charge or obligation to commit to anything afterwards. Great. It's just our way of giving back a little bit and, and helping to inspire and educate people. Yeah, and if you hear this and uh, want to um, yeah, accept that offer, then yeah, just um, uh, we'll give you the contact information here at the end. It'll be in the show notes as well. And just let them know that you heard about um, about Fitness Together here from uh, the Stay Healthy Knoxville uh, podcast. Um but uh, Andrew, here to wrap things up, we just got a few uh, questions here I'd like to ask uh, all my guests. Uh, so uh, the first one is, uh, what's uh, the, maybe the favorite place that you haven't explored, you haven't been to on your bucket list for Knoxville, East Tennessee? Um, the place I haven't been to, um, well, I've only been there once. I would love to go out and explore the Windrock uh um, all-terrain vehicle place. My my wife was going to shoot me when she hears this, but I really want one of those um, <laughs> those razors with a like a four wheeler, but sure. with a razor with a the roll bar on top. Um, and I'd like to get out. I love the mountains. I love the fresh air, and I love to get away from cell phone reception. Sure. Um, and so um, that that's one area I'd like to learn more about, and maybe Big South Fork too. Yeah. Well, let me know. Um, I had a client. I had I never heard of Windrock, but he was telling me about it um, over the fall, and yeah, I was been on their website and was looking around a little bit. It looked looked like a lot of fun. <laughs> I went four four wheeling there once for my birthday, and it was so much fun. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, nice. Well, um. What is one of your places, uh, favorite places just to enjoy around Knoxville, just outside? Yeah, I, I love everything about Knoxville that's outdoors. That's one reason I'm still here. Um, in the summertime, I love just taking our boat out to Teleco Lake and, and dropping an anchor in a cove with a few friends and listening to music and just taking go. it all in. Uh, I love mountain biking. And so probably some of the new mountain bike trails uh, down in South Knoxville, there's some beautiful places down there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Hall Ridge has a special place in my heart for mountain biking as well. It's, yeah. Hall Ridge um, claimed a few staples in my head when I was in high school. Cause I um, was riding out there with the hell out of helmet. It's kind of, we won't get into it too much, but well, it, it's a special place uh, for me too. I haven't been back too often. All, all too these mountain bike there. trails can do nothing but help your business, John Mark. That's right. <laughs> uh, but we're at home and I was uh, um, probably 18 and dumb and yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, um, well, um, favorite restaurants to frequent here, uh, around Knoxville. 
Yeah, so uh, I love food. I'm, uh, that's why I exercise. Um, uh, I've really liked this new place in Market Square called uh, Amelia's. It's a kind of an upscale Italian restaurant. Uh, okay. I think for the money, it's just fantastic food and, and really well out. done. It reminds me of some of the, the nicer Italian restaurants that we had growing up near Philadelphia. So it kind of gives me a taste of home when I go there. Nice. Um, I love barbecue, and there's a place right down the street that does it really well. That's full service barbecue. Oh, yeah. You can throw a cornhole and, uh, and and eat ribs, and uh, that's my kind of place. Definitely. Um, and then I, I'd say probably uh, I, we love sushi, so my wife and I go out for sushi once a month, and it's hard to beat Nama, especially on Monday and Thursday nights for half price night. So there you go. There's your plug for Nama. <laughs> All right, and then um, uh, ending here. What's um, if you had like your best recommendation for somebody to help? them stay healthy what would it be best tip recommendation don't take your health for granted um you know treasure it uh, preserve it do something every day to to further it um because there will be a time when you have sit, uh, become sick or or have surgery and you won't be able to to, to to exercise as much so store it up okay build up as much as you can now um save it for a rainy day because um, you're going to need it one day definitely yeah Awesome, uh, Andrew. It's been uh, a pleasure to have you here on the show. What um, if somebody uh, yeah wants to reach out to you, you find out more about uh, fitness together? What's the best way for them to contact you? Sure. Well, they can call me or text me uh, at eight six five two seven three zero three eight zero. That's the main number for all four of our locations. They can okay. also visit knoxft dot com uh, to go to our website and learn more about us that way. Okay, and we'll have all that information in uh, the show notes as well. If somebody didn't uh, catch that, you can find it in the show notes here for the podcast. Uh, well, uh, yeah, thank you so much, Andrew, again. It's um, it's love to hear uh, about what you're doing here in the Knoxville community and how you're helping so many people uh, to keep moving, keep moving well, and uh, achieving their goals. Uh, well, thanks for having me, John Mark. It's been a pleasure, and uh, stay healthy, Knoxville. That's right, stay healthy, Knoxville. Thank you for tuning in to the Stay Healthy Knoxville podcast, brought to you by Simply Physio. If your pain is preventing you from staying healthy and active and you'd like to avoid surgery, pain medicine, or just want to get back to doing the things you love in and around Knoxville, we offer both a free ebook and free over-the-phone consultation to help you figure out the root cause of your pain and the next best steps for resolving it. Find our ebooks online at simplypt.com slash health dash tips. There you will find ebooks for topics such as neck and shoulder pain, lower back and hip pain, knee pain, and TMJ. These quick to read reports will provide you with expert tips, tricks, and exercises to help solve your pain from the comfort of your own home. Just visit simplypt.com slash health dash tips to download your ebook and have it delivered directly to your inbox. We also offer free, no-obligation phone consultations with a doctor of physical therapy to Knoxville area residents. Just call us at 865-351-0615 or visit us at simplypt.com and click the Talk to a PT button on the home page to schedule a call with us. Thanks again for joining us, and we will see you next time on the Stay Healthy Knoxville podcast. Production. Stay humble.